they're going to be quite good because the Wirewood lets you pick up the Visionary and untap your Arbor or something like that. Jesse he also went just has a from five five. ridiculously far ahead to in a tough spot. Yeah, there's also just this 5-5 five five in play. So uh, the Wirewoods actually represent just eat your guy because the Cradle is animate on both players' turns, the way the yep. Vital Force works. You think Jesse can attack? I don't know. Uh, I think that maybe maybe if we look back the turn with the Dismember, uh, there's maybe he was supposed to sandbag one of those two and just like deploy the I Warping Wheel and have double Dismember. probably played the second thought, not the turn he Dismembered. And then once you have a better board, you can just dismember. But everything. it looks it looks like hindsight's twenty twenty again. Yeah, so it's you, tough to when tell. you play against elves, you're just terrified that you're gonna die anytime Constantly, you pass the yeah. turn. Yeah. So like, it makes total sense that he cast the dismember. Okay, so I'm not sure if he realizes this guy's cradle is available. He may be uh -oh. ready to blow him out, but he may have blown himself out. Yeah. Okay. So I don't think he understood that this was going to happen. Oh, this is definitely going to happen. Yeah. This is disgusting. Yeah, he just gives him a draw. Uh, that's not great. Yeah, that's that's below what you'd like to be. And he's just And he just free rolls the Yeah, he picked up the thing mm -hmm. and then was still able to kill the thought knot. This yeah, this is not looking great. It's not looking that bad though, because But he's at seven. So he's, he's just got... reality smashed. Like he just swings well, out. The thing doesn't have trample, right? The land doesn't have trample, but he has three other attackers, so he just puts him to four. And then yeah, does and the he, same trick where it's untapped to, again. To spin reshaper and then equip yeah. GTA and it's possible that it's gonna be okay. Yeah, but the the Nissa trick still works again, right? Like, mm -hmm. the Cradle is still just a 5-5 five, five on D again. And it looks like he actually picked up a Glimpse for turn. So he's going to get to do some silly shenanigans with all I of think that extra mana, plus the Birchler and it's the... It's unlikely that Jesse sees another untap step. Yeah, I think this game is is very likely over. With this Cradle making, like, 4, then 5, then 6, yep. then 7, or some some nonsense like that, if not less. Oh, another Cradle. Oh, my God. The free 4. Yep. Just like, I didn't need this anymore. It's fine. <laughs> And you have two visionary loops, right? Oh, okay, so this is something I used to get in trouble with a lot for, though, with the Glimpse. Uh, I used to get in a ton of trouble for Graveyard Order if I ever put the Glimpse chilling in play mm -hmm. and then fetched. I just would, like, get snap, gun down with a so Judge Call the Glimpse for that. is in play so that he remembers that Glimpse yeah. is going on. But I, I would always have to put it in my Graveyard and, like, use a die or something, or I would constantly have a Judge problem. Elves, when you know what you're doing, is really busted. Oh, yes. Yeah. Andrew Jessup just, like, never loses. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, sometimes he just gets Emrakuld. Yeah. <laughs> Pyroclasm also uh, Tom, quite, Tom quite Ellis strong. rarely loses, too, if you watch him play Elves. He's, yeah. He goes deep in, like, almost every Legacy Open. Yeah. Yeah. When you play Elves well, you basically are able to outclass every fair matchup, but, like, they're the decks you just can never beat, right? Like, Lands is a joke, right? You just get Tabernacled and Snap lose. They mm -hmm. Punishing Fire all your guys, things yep. like that. Chalice on one. Yep. At the Players' breaking. Championship, Andrew Jessup actually got the double lands yeah. bracket. He got Grix's Control double lands. Yeah. I found Crater Hoof, and that's Yeah, so game. That's, that's game, yeah. <coughs> ah! I'm alive. <laughs> Sneezy so, Daddy. Uh, do we have... How do we feel about their I'm just allergic moves? to Crater Hoof, I guess. Oh, I thought you were going to say you were allergic to me. No. Nah. Would have been a good dagger. You're great. Um... So we have Tom's list. Uh, we know Jesse has two main deck chalice and a third one to bring in. I, I think thought, that that's. I thought we had it. Maybe we're, we're getting one of our right production now. assistants stole yes. it. Yes. Why our do boy, we have like six production? Our assistants? boy A. A. Ron Rodger uh, is our number one production assistant. That's uh, number three in the power rankings. He's our number one, number three production assistant. Uh, he just dropped a bunch of the There's deck list. There's so why many he's cooks been demoted. in the kitchen right now. Yeah, he's been demoted to number four. The best was when the stream went out and they all just looked at us like, "Do something." Yeah. And we were like, yo, how do you feel about GP Progenitus? Ma magic's Great. hard, but coverage is quite hard, too. Coverage is... The first time I ever did coverage, I've still done it a very si yeah. single-digit number of times, but the first time I did coverage, very hard. Yeah, so... I have it's such an appreciation for it. I think what Jesse is snapboarding out these Storm of Amethysts, uh, historically mm -hmm. taxing non-creatures less than great against the 35 main deck yeah. creatures deck. I think Tom will be boarding in the... I think I like boarding in this, the Rurik Thar just because it's huge. I like yeah. boarding in the Scavenging Ooze too, just because it can get huge. There's also just a surprisingly high number of spells coming out of the Eldrazi Stompy creature Yeah, I think he'll be, he'll be bringing in Abrupt Decay yes. because it answers Chalice yeah. and some of the Eldrazis. And Jite, which is important. Yes. And Thoughtseize, for sure. Yep. It's possible he also brings in Cabal Therapy just to blind name Chalice on turn one yeah. to make sure he doesn't lose to it. I think Jesse's likely boarding in the Always Dust, the other Chalice, the Ratchet Bomb should really shine also. Endbringer will shine as well. Endbringer's fantastic. Uh, I think it's his third 
Uh, Spatial Contortion, also quite good in the matchup. So as Jesse it's just has no swords. copies of main deck Warping Whale, right? Uh, no, it actually looks like he only has the two out of the board, yeah. So, but he had Warping Whale in his hand, right? Uh, so that might have been a sideboard well, We're not sure if he had the Warping Whale in his hand. I'm pretty sure he did. We we think it was a, a Warping Whale, but it could have been an Eldrazi Mimic or any number of okay. other random two drops. So it's difficult to tell. Um... Uh, I think I'm boarding out this Crucible of Worlds. The also. pattern it, at which it's almost comically the, bad. The pattern at which they're sideboarding leads me to believe that that was game one. Yeah. And that it was not a warping whale. I just thought it was something yeah. else. It was probably GTA. Yeah. I don't know for sure, but. Uh, but I'm certainly boarding out Thorn, Thorn, Crucible. These cards are comically bad. Mm -hmm. I uh, like I like warping whale though. Stops yeah. glimpse and uh, natural order. So I like Chalice, Zenith. Ratchet Bomb, Warping Whale, Spatial Contortion, and Endbringer. Mm -hmm. Cage also quite good actually. Cage is fine as well. Uh, turns like, off Green Sun Zenith and Natural Order. Every single card in your sideboard order. except Metamorph. Well, actually, you can Metamorph Crater Hoof and just hoof. randomly kill them. Yeah, but I feel like the turns where they cast Hoof and you don't die are the turns where they fucked up on the math. I and I think it's so lineage. unlikely that Tom Ellis messes up on the math mm -hmm. that uh, I've Phantasmal I think imaged Crater Hoof before. Really? That's gasoline. Did, did, did it work? Was it outside of cube? I, it, it worked in that I vialed in phantasmal image. Oh, okay. Uh, got the trigger, and then like dismembered his crater hoof, and then like blocked and killed oh, the other on one. Oh, you fish. Yeah. Okay. I also cast a, a curse catcher into my own chalice of the void, and then immediately before that cast silvergill adept, revealing the curse catcher off of cavern of souls. Jeez. So that was a train wreck. Yeah. Of several different capacities. That sounds really good. Yeah, it was so, pretty funny. The Metamorph, very unlikely to have Flash. So, probably worse. Yeah. Also, like, you just get another Thought Not Seer, right? Yeah, but we saw Thought Not Seer actually just get outclassed in that matchup. Yeah, but I think most games where you cast two Thought Not Seers with any reasonable, like, inner... Like, he cast two Thought Not Seers and two Dismembers and still lost. Like, yeah, how does fair. that even happen? I feel like that's in a that's a 20% game. Like, yeah. I don't think... I think... 80% of the time you cast two Thought Not Seers and two Dismembers by turn four, you should win. Yeah. But that's also just like a, a big shout out to Tom Ellis' deck building, right? He just had this one Nissa main deck Nissa, Nissa and it's just been insane it's every won game. every single game we've seen him on camera yeah. so far. Card, card's too good. It needs to be banned in the interest of metagame diversity. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> in the interest of viewership or viewer uh, coverage oh, okay. diversity, yeah, I guess. Game, game ending diversity. Kill him with a natural order one of these times. Come on. It's Show like us. the same play pattern every time, but the play pattern is like really cool and absurd, yeah. so we're fine with it. Yeah. I think we're rolling back down to see yeah. the start of game two. I think if I was Tom, I'd be kind of tired of killing people with Nissa, though, because it's like... Show it that it's in your hand, have them read it, have them play in, around it incorrectly, and then kill them with it. Just like, rinse and repeat. It's so, interesting how our bracket worked out. We have like, two semi-fair non-blue yeah. decks on one side of the bracket, and two very fair blue decks on the other side of the yeah. bracket. It's, it's It feels so strange to call the blue decks fair, just because like, the card Brainstorm just fair. never feels remotely fair. But then you just see the what the definition of unfair Why is, and you're you like, well, this has to be when you can Nissa Vital Force. <laughs> Why like, would you Nissa close, Vital right? Force when you could reanimate Grizzlebrand? Yeah, I guess you can do anything. Yeah. You could even just put in Iona and then still lose both post-board games. It's also crazy. Must be the... The, uh, the Nissa Vital Force. The black discard spells <laughs> in, in Tom's sideboard really showed up probably yeah, in those post-board games. Yeah, that's quite likely. Also, um... Uh, the surgical extractions may have come up huge. And the ooze as well. Yeah, so the ooze I found was a little bit too slow some of the time because I just turbo you. I kind of like Rurikthar in this matchup too, just because it's a 6-6. Six, six. Okay, and we have uh, uh, um, another result. Uh, our last top 8 match, Joe Stempo was able to take down. Uh, he is the um, the 4-color control player yeah, we so saw earlier playing, on in the day. So he's playing Joe He's playing against Joe Brennan off camera. in the other... That's the, that's the fair blue mirror. Yes. Uh, but so we now know the actual players in that matchup. And so it looks like Jesse's able to keep his 7, and I think Tom's on a similar plan. It's a tough call to bet against Joe Brennan in this tournament, but I think that Stempo's deck has the edge. It's a tough call to bet against Joe Brennan pretty much in every metric. He, he'll find a way to get there. His foils are too beautiful to lose. I think on paper, it favors Stempo, though. Yeah, but I think that the Divert and the Misdirection can come up huge. Against the Abrupt Decay, Colligan's yeah, 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 Command yeah, yeah. deck? Yeah. Colligan's Command? I'd like you to discard. Sorry. I think you can only change it if it has a single target. But yeah. I'm, does Divert work the same way? I know Misdirection's only a single target, but I'm not 100% on how Divert works. I believe Divert's the same way. Okay, it just costs a blue instead of being a pitch counter? Yeah, and then they can pay two to stop it from happening. Okay. Okay. So it's then, one blue uh, 
Uh, change the target of target spell with a single target. Okay. And then any uh, its controller may pay two to stop this or something okay. like that. Okay. And so we see Tom doing some shenanigans with um, uh, I think that was a Korean Ranger. It might have been uh, just a block. It's see another good. early thought not seer from yeah from Jesse. So uh, it looks like Jesse cast that off a spirit guide because he has an ancient tomb and a, a mm -hmm. wasteland in place. So he's yep, likely turn two thought not seer off spirit guide. He's also likely at eighteen via that uh, that ancient tomb dealing him two mm -hmm. damage. Uh, and Tom just doing the usual elves thing, just going off. I don't I don't really mind what you're doing. I'm just playing my motley crew of one ones and hope that they make nine mana and kill you. Uh, also, uh, for uh, the viewers, it doesn't look like Tom drew the Nissa Vital Force this time, so we might see the normal way the deck works, rather than the way that only we Tom's build works. We could see a Jitae and an Equip here, or we could just see Reality Smasher and the pedal go to the floor. So if the Jitae is cast and equipped, that's... I don't know if he has a Jitae, but it would be oh, okay. a good spot That'd for be one, quite because good, yes. Ranger is not actually live yet. Yeah. Um, because he has not yet found the Dryad Armor to pair with it. Do you think Tom tries to grind it out? Like, just, like, double blocks just, like, or triple, triple blocks? Triple blocks, blocks I mean? the Thought Knot? Yeah. Uh, and then you just... So I think that if you do that, Jesse just kills everything that he isn't a Queer Ranger. He doesn't do that, which means that Jesse might just be dead. Yeah. Because I feel like there's a lot of games where you just do that. Uh, you get to keep a creature and draw a card? Yeah, but so if he's got a Heritage Druid and he's not yet dead, he might just want to try to leverage some more mana and maybe natural order for something like a Rurik Thar that's just bigger than everything else in play. Cavern also allows you to cast your stuff through Chalice, which is kind of crazy. Yes. Uh, I believe he's on uh, two Cavern? One Cavern? Yeah, he's on one Cavern and one Pendlehaven but he as has part of his rotate crop package. rotation, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's on how many rotations? One, we think? One, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like uh, Tom is casting a Birchler Ranger off the Cavern of Souls and then able to parlay that into generating black via the Birchler Ranger's activated ability. For Thought Seize, which is probably just supposed to take Thought Not Seer again. Uh, yeah, so it's close because the sixth land lets you Oblivion so, but I think that you care more about your cards than a random 5-8. So I think I think it's likely that he'll take the Thought Not. I mean, the Thought Not would put Tom down to one card in hand and yeah. like still doesn't have a good block. Yeah. So like I think he's probably gonna take the thought knot, and yeah. he does choose to take because the, the reshaper is like pretty underwhelming, and yeah, the sower is not, not currently much. castable. That card costs six. Uh, I I may have revealed some termini to its counterbalance trigger. <laughs> it's usually off cavern, and it doesn't matter. It's and just they just put four thing. lands into play anyway. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so he's got to gain life a little bit. So yeah, he's gonna gain two life. Buoy that attack. Uh, yeah. So he's gonna just gain life off of the card he thought sees. So that's a nice little combo there. Uh, that's a Patrick Sullivan definition of combo. A This card does something and this card works with it. Yeah, I like that kind of combo. <laughs> like islands and or mountains and burn spells. So activated his ranger here, right? To untap the yes. forest. Or to untap the death rite. Yeah, to mean? untap the death rite so he can run that play again post blocks potentially. Um, unclear if he actually is repping an abrupt decay or something like he that. He can still he rep could, the... He, triple block. Yeah. Well, he could also now eat a land. Uh, I believe he has a fetch in his bin. There may not be a land to eat. But if there is a land to eat, he's repping Abrupt Decay right now as well, where the death rate generates black. And then he's able to uh, Abrupt Decay the Reality Smasher, or whatever it's called. The the three drop. Uh, matter Reshaper. Matter Reshaper, sure. If it enters. I mean, I, I don't love that, but it's at least another piece of food. Well, Jesse picked up a City of Traders yeah. so he can actually go... So Jesse can actually Wasteland this cavern and then still deploy his threat. <laughs> I just elected to chump block. Yeah. With Nettle Sentinel. So I I, I like that line. I like wasting yeah, I don't and like then the using three soul tennis. lands. Now he can waste. Oh, he's just gonna he's gonna play reshape. Oh, he's just gonna reshape and preserve his own life total and not deal himself any damage. I can get okay. behind that as well. Uh, so I think maybe Jesse's decided that it's a losing battle to try to just not die every turn, mm -hmm. and so he's just decided that he's gonna assume that he's getting fair gamed, and if he gets comboed, he gets comboed. Well, I would like to waste the ledge, just waste his land there. Yeah. You know? It's. it's it's close. You can waste his land and play Shaper. Yeah. Or waste his land and play Sower and take yeah. some damage. So it's uh, it's tough. Um, unclear whether Jesse had a specific line in well, like, mind there's that no, he's playing around. There's no way that he can cast the Sower once he casts... Or there's no way he can cast the Shaper once he casts the Sower. Because I don't think there's anything in Tom's deck that taps for Colorless. Uh, yeah, but he could float... Uh, he could tap seven and float a colorless. Well, then he the can't. Ca he can't wasteland it. Yeah, the yeah, entire yeah. point of the play is, is okay. So we it. found a wasteland off of our uh, flip from the reality smasher or the matter reshaper. And we had that okay. enter. 
Um, so like no a wasteland reason... end of combat step. Yeah. Um, he, I kind of like doing too. that. That's 